Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 11 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of PCI of the last remaining vessel. This was a 58-year patient who presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He was intubated and uh, transferred for immediate evaluation. His blood pressure was maintained, but he was tachycardic and he had positive biomarkers. He had history of multiple comorbidities, including CKD and CHF. His last ejection fraction six months ago was 35%, with multiple areas of hypokinesis. He did have dynamic EKG changes with pronounced ST segment depressions in the anterior precordial and the inferior leads, which were resolving intermittently. And this is the echocardiogram demonstrating hypokinesis. The patient was sent for um, emergent coronary angiography and revascularization. Upon arrival to the cardiac cath lab, right heart catheterization was done, showing a wedge pressure of 34 millimeters of mercury, um, a hemoglobin of 8.5 and a PA of 65 millimeters of mercury. So clearly decompensated with very high filling pressures. This is coronary angiogram which demonstrates that the patient essentially has a single patent vessel, the left main that supplies the LAD, the circumflex is occluded, filling laid by collaterals, and so is the posterior descending artery that is also filling by collaterals. This is another projection showing the significant left main disease, showing the filling of the PDA and the PLV, as well as the retrograde filling of the circumflex and the obtuse marginal branch. The right coronary artery was occluded at the ostium and uh, the subclavian did not show any significant stenosis. The patient was evaluated by cardiac surgery who deemed it to be extremely high risk for performing bypass surgery, therefore he was sent for high risk PCI. This is his iliac angiogram demonstrating non-obstructive disease in the right iliac. So our plan was to attempt recanalization using hemodynamic support, especially given his very high filling pressures of a wedge of 34 millimeters of mercury. So an impella CP device was inserted without any complications. And then we were um, considering various treatment options. The simplest one would be to just stand the left main into the LAD without paying attention to the circumflex or the right coronary artery. However, given the patient's low ejection fraction, that would give him the least chance of recovery. So our initial attempt was to first treat the lady and then potentially also attempt the circumflex if everything went okay. The patient had diffuse disease in the LAD, so before standing the proximal, we decided to optimize the mid. There was a mid LAD disease at the diagonal. We stented the mid LAD with a drug eluting stand, and then we performed the DK crust technique for treating the LAD diagonal bifurcation with a 2.5 by 12 in the diagonal that was um, deployed and then subsequently crushed with um, a balloon into the LAD. And then the side branch was rewired using the twin pass catheter, which is a very useful um, tool for rewiring through um, deployed and crushed stent struts. After doing that, we did a high pressure post dilation and uh, did the first kiss as part of the DK crust technique. And that makes the bifurcation look pretty good. We had actually significant difficulty advancing a stent past that area, presumably because of the stent struts of the diagonal stent protruding into the LAD. And we used the diagonal with an anchor balloon to be able to deliver a stent into the LAD. The stent was then delivered and was deployed. We then rewired the diagonal once again using the twin pass and then perform high pressure dilation of the side branch and the second kiss inflation with a very nice result um, into the LAD diagonal bifurcation. Then, given the significant disease in the left main and the proximal LAD, before doing anything else, we decided to stand with a 3.5 by 24 millimeter drug eluting stand that was deployed and um, post dilated with a 3.5 osteal flush to facilitate um, subsequent engagement of the guide catheter. So we have a good result so far with standing of the left main as well as the LAD. There is excellent flow. However, we thought that this was the last chance of potentially recanalizing the circumflex. 
because now there is a stand and then if we left it due to scar formation it might have been very hard to get there in the future therefore we attempted to cross into the circumflex it is unclear if this was a cto or not it could well have been a cto however the patient also had a non-st elevation myocardial infarction therefore it could have been an acute lesion nevertheless the same principles apply since it's a total occlusion there was a clear cap the length was about 20 millimeters good quality distal vessel with bifurcation and distal cap and epicardial collaterals that didn't seem particularly appealing so our plans were our plan was to do undergrade wire escalation or undergrade dissection and re-entry and with our pleasant surprise we advanced the fine cross microcatheter through the stand and then very easily crossed with the pilot 200 guide wire into the obtuse marginal branch this suggests that maybe this was an acute lesion after all. This was confirmed with injection demonstrating the wire being into the first obtuse marginal branch. And then once again we used the twin pass to wire into the inferior branch of that obtuse marginal which was a fairly large caliber branch. This appears to also be into the true lumen. And then we decided to perform standing technique. Our plan was to do provisional standing, just place a stand from the proximal circumflex into the inferior branch with provisional balloon inflation in the superior branch if needed. However, after the stand was placed into that inferior branch, we completely lost the flow into the superior branch. We did multiple attempts to advance a guide wire into that branch. However, we were unable to do so. And as a result, what we did is uh, we advanced a, uh, a threader that um, uh, crushed the deployed stand into the inferior branch. And then after doing that, we placed a stand into the superior branch, essentially crushing the previously placed stand. That was followed by twin pass catheter to rewire distally and a kissing balloon for optimizing the distal vessel. We then placed an additional stand in the proximal circumflex that gave an excellent final result with restoration of Timothy flow in both branches of the circumflex. Clearly, it was a complex procedure with a large volume of contrast of 550 ml and long fluoroscopy time. However, only two gray were used given the use of the latest uh, Philips uh, X-ray machine. So in summary, this case provides several lessons. The first one is that use of hemodynamic support can facilitate performance of complex procedures like this one. This particular patient had uh, a very high risk anatomy with a single remaining vessel with the left main having a lesion supplying both the LAD as well as the circ and the right coronary through collaterals. Also, the patient had ischemic cardiomyopathy with very high filling pressures with a wedge of 34 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, his risk was very, very high. By using hemodynamic support, we could stabilize him and allow performance of fairly complete revascularization, except for the right coronary artery, by recanalizing both the LAD as well as the circumflex. Another lesson is the use of the DK crust technique for bifurcation. This was successfully used in the LAD with a nice result in the LAD and the diagonal branch. We did have a, a, a treatment of the second bifurcation, which was the left main circumflex with a single crossover technique. A single stand was done um, into the left main. And then through that stand, we were able to go and recanalize the third bifurcation, which was the CTO of the circumflex. An interesting finding of that bifurcation was that after standing into one branch, flow was lost into the other branch and could not be rewired. Therefore, we did a reverse crash by placing a stand of the second branch and then rewiring into the first branch and doing a final kissing balloon inflation. Thank you.